time to talk movies. Just a few years ago, this type of aerial footage would have been nearly impossible. Today, television and film is soaring to new heights, in large part because of drone technology. Donald Brennan of Brennan Real Estate joins us back on the ground to introduce us to Brooklyn-based Arabo. Thanks, Kathy. In the competitive visual field of film and television, technology has changed how media is made. Drone technology is cutting edge. Still controversial and highly regulated, one Brooklyn company based here in Industry City is making its mark around the country. Launched in 2014 and still a relatively small company, Aerobo is one of the biggest drone companies in the country. The co-founders, former NYU students who graduated with big dreams. So you've started your own company. Can you explain to us why and uh, what's driven you to do that? Sure. Um, you know, it's sort of thing like uh, I didn't really pick it, it kind of chose me. I was uh, happily engaged in another profession uh, before I was like producing uh, movies and TV commercials and things like that. And uh, about three or four years ago or so, I just saw a drone flying in a video on YouTube and I was just kind of uh, captivated by it. Right. Um, and I realized the immediate potential of what they could be, you know, used for in mm -hmm. the media space and you know many other different spaces. So I realized there was a need. I knew, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I recognized that. You know, I thought this was cool, and I assumed if I thought it was cool, other people would find it cool too. Sure. So that's led you to the drone only line of the business. Yeah. Um, there's just something uh, that's real, really interesting. It's not just about the drone. For me, it was more of the ability to kind of capture and mm -hmm. capture beautiful images. Uh, I often say, uh, you know, companies are not paying us for drones, they're paying us for pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, they're more interested, I'm more interested in getting that beautiful shot and moving the camera in a unique and interesting way. Right. And the location where you've set up your office here uh, in Brooklyn, um, can you explain uh, why it's unfolded that way? Yeah, uh, was, one is kind of a practical one, which is I was born in Queens uh -huh. and I lived in Jersey for a bit, but I went to NYU Film School, so uh -huh. I've been in New York for 10 contiguous, over 10 contiguous years now. Mm -hmm. It was easier to stay than it was to go. Sure. Um, uh, that might be the paramount reason, right. but uh, you know I, I love the city. There's a wealth of talent here. Yeah. Uh, you know, large media companies here um, who are our primary customers. So mm -hmm. it just it makes sense. Designed similar to a lab, Aerobo makes its own drones right here in Brooklyn. Hi, Donald. I'm Suresh Kumar. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm the lead aeronautical engineer here at Aerobo. Mm -hmm. So I design, build, and test all our heavy lift systems. Sure. And uh, this drone right here is our custom built 55 pound heavy lifter. The payload is about 21 pounds, mm -hmm. the airframe weighs about 19 pounds, right. and the batteries are about 15 pounds. Yep. We have a flight time of about 12 minutes, mm -hmm. a top speed of 35 miles an hour, and it can fly in winds up to 20 knots. Can you explain to us the configuration of these props here and what they're made out of? Yeah, sure. So this is basically a coax config mm -hmm. and what that does for us is that it gives us a more like steady thrust profile right. along you know the from the hub to the tip. Mm -hmm. So what that does for you is that it performs better in the wind right. while also allowing you to like shrink the whole airframe. Yep. So it's it's just like a more robust it handles more robustly than a flat mm -hmm. configuration which mm -hmm. most of the drones in the market actually are. Right. And That's the material itself Carbon fiber. So carbon fiber is like definitely like the next gen material is super light. Mm -hmm. So what it allows you to do is allows you to like accelerate and decelerate the props very fast, mm -hmm. which gives you like better handling performance. Got it. And the entire craft itself is like pretty much like built out of carbon fiber, mm -hmm. and that allows us to like be lightweight and like still you know like have the rigidity and like flexibility like to do the job. Right. So a little more expensive, but a lot more functional. Exactly. Yeah.
obviously is controlling the drone, mm -hmm. while the camera operator can turn, tilt, pan the mm -hmm. camera head in, right. uh, completely individually of the drone. Sure. Um, so yeah, it kind of feels like a video game controller. Yeah. Um, just with a few more switches, bells totally. and whistles, yeah. stuff like that. Looks like a toy, but certainly not a toy. Certainly not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you want to see one fly? Yeah, let's check it out. Cool. Suresh, do you mind popping the Inspire on the ground over there? Uh, we have a long list of uh, checklists mm -hmm. that we check off um, multiple things before each flight. Sure. Um, the custom systems will obviously have a much longer checklist sure. than you know something smaller. Um, one important thing to do before you move locations every time is to right. calibrate the compass Got of it. the drone. Mm -hmm. um, so I will set that up right now and I will do what we like to call the drone dance. Calibrate the compass. Wait right here. Mm -hmm. Spin it horizontally, 360. Mm -hmm. And then tilt it on its side, same thing, 360. Good to go. All right, so we got a good, cali good compass calibration. Mm -hmm. So good to go. Um, if everybody stands back before we fly every time on set or wherever we are, we like right. to announce our takeoffs yeah. and our landings. Mm -hmm. So I would yell, clear prop. And then you're ready to go. So yeah, you'll see they handle pretty well. You can bring up your landing gear. Very nice. Yeah. Very precise. What are the lights for in the back? The green um, lights? There's green lights in the back and red lights in the front. The orientation. This gives you orientation yep. for when you're in the air. Yep. Um, and the, the LED light blinking in the back will also blink different colors uh -huh. to tell you different things that are happening. Got it. But everything's green right now. Green is always good. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> and we'll bring it back down. Land it here back down. So, there you go. There, I know it wasn't much. It was awesome. Thank you. So what drew you to the space you're in right now, working in the media? Uh, well, you know, I, that was my first passion in life. I, you know, since I was five years old, I loved uh, uh, the cinema. I loved movies. Uh, for me, it was like, you know, there's an artistic element to it and, sure. uh, and a technical element to it. It's like the two of the things I'm like yeah. very interested in. Yeah. Uh, the sciences and the arts. Uh, and when I kind of saw like a flying robot filming a movie, mm -hmm. that was the coolest thing right. imaginable. Uh, so it, it definitely made sense. And the use case is immediately apparent uh, mm -hmm. for drones. Like they don't need to. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of selling that goes into it. Sure. So I think it's like immediately understandable mm -hmm. uh, how they want to use it, and we've Im immediately had success selling it to that industry. Mm -hmm. We do plan to next year, like you know, go into different verticals, and mm -hmm. we already have some traction and sort some more like industrial applications. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, media, movies, it's they're just looking for it. To, they're looking to wow audiences, yeah. and this is definitely a, a good way to do it. Nice. Can you share some of uh, titles of some of the productions you've been involved with? Sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the we're doing a ton of like Marvel shows, Netflix TV shows. We just mm -hmm. did like Bloodline, which is on Netflix. Uh, we just did we're uh, uh, Red Bull's exclusive drone provider, so we're doing their uh, broadcast drone work. We just did something I think in Minneapolis for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have a couple of really big projects coming up. Already amassing an impressive list of film and television credits, Aerobo has caught the eyes of investors. So I, I gather you probably started out with some friends and family supporting the uh, finances, the operation, and uh, probably a need for more capital. Where do you stand in that fundraising right now? Sure, yeah. So about a year and a half, two years ago, we raised our first round of, of funding, and that was uh, friends and family, angel investors. And mm -hmm. a lot of those people had you know, finance backgrounds or they were successful entrepreneurs, yeah. uh, things like that. And then we just actually closed on uh, uh, our seed round, our next round, mm -hmm. uh, which was venture capital from from some VCs, right. uh, and now the goal is to essentially you know grow the business with that, and then in a, in a year's time, about you know do a Series A and raise you know ten million dollars. Right, pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. Aerial photography has arrived with companies like Aerobo betting on its future. Even so, in many ways, drone technology is still in its infancy with a robo already taking center stage. I'm Donald Brennan of Brennan Real Estate. Back to you, Kathy. Up next, 
I take on a small redesign project with the help of luxury lighting brand, Shakuf. Up next.